Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be talking about continental drift. So something that you need to be aware of about continental drift. We've spent a lot of time already talking about the tectonic plates and there are about 15 tectonic plates is what we said, major and minor, um, and they contain the continents and all of the oceans on earth. Now Continents don't move very much. Um, they move at about the rate of an inch or more a year. Um, often it's just about two and a half centimeters or something like that. And so that means that, you know, um, they're moving extremely slowly. But the nice thing about continental drift or the idea behind continental drift is it explains a little bit about something that we um, have anticipated for some time, which is that if we go back in time, 200 million years or so, all of these land masses, so South America, Africa, Eurasia, Australia, all this stuff, they're all kind of uh, connected together in what we call Pangaea. Pangaea, pan means all, gia or geo means land or earth. So here is a little animation of that. Um, I'll point out the continents to you. So you've got South America, you've got Africa. Um, this is um, uh, the Middle East. This is India. This is Europe. Um, North America, I think I already said that, Asia's over here, but you can see that they were all combined together and then they slowly separated over the course of about 200 million years. Most people know about Pangaea because they are aware of like, okay, everything was connected, but they're not sure or extremely certain about like, oh, how connected it was, but it was literally all the land on earth was all located in one location on the globe and there wasn't really any other land anywhere else. So the land masses on Earth, though, have also changed shape because of other things. So they're not perfectly like the ones that we have today, but because of plate tectonics, because of the ocean levels going up and down, um, they look very different in some cases from each other or to what they look like today. Now, proofs of continental drift. Um, continental drift is a theory that goes back to the 1800s, um, and it gained a lot of steam uh, in the 1900s. but uh, here are some things that you can look at to prove that the continents were probably all connected at some point. The first are that we have common fossils. So animal and plant fossils have been found in previously joined areas if you go back far enough. So for example, South America and Africa perfectly look like they fit in one another. Um, incidentally, if you include like Madagascar and stuff, you can also see that India would fit on this corner here. Antarctica fits pretty okay, actually, and um, Australia also. Uh, in this little area, but this is just showing part of Pangaea. Um, but anyway, getting back to what I was talking about, animal and plant fossils have been found in previously joined areas. So this little guy can't really swim, but we find fossils on this side of Africa and on this side of South America, which probably means that they were actually joined at some point so that this creature could just walk across it as if it was one big landmass. Um, and then anything after that, so after, you know, the separation of Africa and South America, you don't find as many or any common fossils anymore. And that would be because, you know, now they're separated by an ocean. So only things that were able to swim uh, would be able to go across um, this area. Um, same thing with plants. Uh, this, for example, is found in South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, Australia. It's found on all of these continents, which means that it was probably, again, widespread because these were all connected as one big unit at some point. Uh, another little fact, glacial deposits leave scratches in rock, and as they move, they can spread because as glaciers move, they start to etch into rock, and they're consistent with Pangaea. So again, Antarctica, you can picture, you know, it's obviously still in ice today, but South America, Africa, India, Australia, um, especially uh, the lower portion of Africa, India, and Australia, they're definitely not going to have like ice um, in those areas very often or at all. So you can see that um, there was an area though that was in common with Antarctica here that was covered with ice and that you can see this kind of like movement um, if you look at like the rock uh, formations and rock samples from the past in those areas. And so that would be again caused by glacial deposits. Something else, um, seashells and marine fossils have been found near convergent plate boundaries. Remember, convergent means that they're pushing together. So you have something going that way, something going this way. They're getting pushed here. There's a lot of pressure. And so you get mountains forming because of that. So seashells and marine fossils have been found on mountains near convergent plate boundaries. Obviously, seashell and marine fossils can't get to the top of mountains. How do they get there? Well, if you think about it, if a plate is flat here and flat here, um, it's probably going to be along an ocean 
that's separating it, right? Like right here in the middle. But if, you know, these are convergent plate boundaries, that means that they would get pushed on. And as they get pushed on, that means that it would start to rise up. So if you have any, you know, fossils that have been deposited, it's obvious that, okay, great. As you go up this mountain, you're going to actually get into old enough rock layers that are going to have some marine fossils in them. And so again, that's just another little proof of, okay, these things happen slowly over the course of a really long period of time. Also, the age of rocks has been found that if you're looking at a divergent plate boundary, so remember, convergent coming together, divergent leaving and going apart. Divergent plate boundaries, on the other hand, are separating from each other. So what we have here is this is the Atlantic Ocean's uh, divergent plate boundary. Um, you can see that's um, Florida and New York and stuff, and then you've got um, Spain and you've got Africa. This, though, is the actual plate boundary, and you can see that the red stuff is the newest rock and the blue stuff is the oldest rock. So you can see the oldest rock is located here off the coast of Africa, off the coast of the United States, um, off the coast of uh, South America. And so the newest rock is found near the plate boundary. Why does that make sense if this is happening over, you know, like 200 million years? Well, it makes sense because divergent plate boundaries make new land because, or make new, you know, underwater land, um, because as they separate, magma leaks out and that rock is brand new. That means that the oldest rock would be the rock that used to combine these continents together. And so again, that's exactly how uh, continental drift kind of works, right? And so again, you can anticipate this if you know what you're looking for. But those are just four different proofs of continental drift being an actual thing. Also, last but not least, this doesn't really have to do with continental drift directly. This is a second like little thing, but impact craters. Impact craters are depressions in the earth caused by objects in space hitting the surface of the earth. And the earth has some pretty big impact craters. Um, using that though, we can actually use a very interesting little formula which um, we can use to calculate how much energy the impact of something had. So again, we can calculate the energy of the impact using some um, little math uh, trickery. And we'll talk about this when we're doing our lab later on. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna remind you of a formula that's Ke equals one half mv squared. So what do these things stand for? M is the mass and that's in kilograms. Ke is the energy. So just like we've been talking about energy uh, being measured in joules or kilojoules, that is still the same thing. So the energy, in this kinetic energy stuff is going to be measured in uh, joules. Then you've got V is velocity, uh, not volume, but velocity. Okay, Velocity is measured in meters per second. So what this is saying is that the object that is hitting something um, or is in movement uh, is related to two things. First of all, how much does that object weigh? And we can estimate that based on the size of the crater. We'll talk about that in our lab. And then the velocity, how fast is it moving? Yes, this is one half m times v squared. Only the v is squared, okay? You only square the velocity. And so when an object hits, boom. Um, again, if you know the mass of the object, you know how fast it was moving, you can tell how much energy it had. So here is an example of that. How many joules of energy are released when a meteorite weighing 1,355 kilograms hits the Earth at uh, 72,000 meters per second? Okay. Now again, this thing's moving fast and it's big. You're going to get a huge amount of energy released. Let's talk about it. So we don't know Ke. It's asking me how many joules of energy. What is the mass? Right here. What is the velocity? Right here. So if we plug that in, it would look like this. And yes, I only square this. You can see I'm squaring a huge number. I'm going to get a big answer. So your calculator is probably going to give you this in scientific notation. But 3.51 times 10 to the 12 joules. And again, that is a meteorite hitting the Earth. That is a huge amount of energy being released. Now, let's do another one, something a lot smaller. Let's say that you know you have a roller coaster car that is 625 kilograms. It's moving about 18.3 meters per second. How much energy is being released, or how much energy is there, you know, in this entire process? Uh, and specifically, we're looking at again kinetic energy, not potential or anything else. Okay, kinetic energy? Question mark. I've got my kilograms. That would be my mass. I've got my meters per second. That would be my velocity. I plug it into my calculator like this. Again, not nearly as big of a thing that I'm talking about here with my um, my velocity, but still, it's going to get you know 